Hi there everyone. Um, I wanted to start off by just really thanking everybody who subscribed to this channel and who comments and likes the videos. I really appreciate it um, and I have now got over, over a thousand subscribers which is great. So thank you everybody who's made the effort and commented and your comments are really lovely and I do appreciate them. So in this video I've got a real treat for you. It's a lady who really inspires me and has such a zest for life. Um, she's actually 90 years old but it's still very creative. But this video is not only going to be interesting for those of you that are artists. I think it will just be interesting to everybody to be honest who loves to see people who are enthusiastic about what they do and are still going on well at the age of 90. So get yourself a nice cup of tea, enjoy the video and I'll see you next time. Hello, I'm Julian and this is my studio in the old forge of the village where the blacksmith worked. It's dating from 1742 and aren't I lucky to have such a great space. I suppose I first started drawing when I was 12 or so and then you have a long gap while you're busy working, teaching in my case, and bringing up children and then I was lucky enough to have a new beginning when I went to do a degree locally in English and art and that started me off on some serious work which included printing, life drawing, obviously all the other media which was great fun and that's 30 years ago so here I am now in my own studio trying to keep going despite being 90 which prevents me traveling to the Arctic and the Hebrides, which are my favorite places. I, I'm not good at hot countries and I like to be away from people, not in crowds. So I regret to say I've never been to India or Africa or any of the very populous hot places. The Arctic is very exciting. It's changing rapidly unfortunately but the colours are amazing turquoise dark blue in the ice and it's not all white it's mostly grey and going there in a small ship with 40 passengers there's a certain amount of roughing it and we land and walk for three hours in the morning exploring some gullies and then maybe in the afternoon get into one of the zodiacs, that's a, a rib, and be taken round to a bird colony where you could hardly hear yourself think there were so many thousands of birds and we were tiny down below this huge cliff. And another afternoon or morning, it would be threading your way through among the icebergs which are grounded in one particular area. And another time we were walking on the sea, we could go no further because the ice had blocked the way and the crew told us that we were walking on the ice which was two miles above the seabed, which is quite a thought when you take your next step. When I, I had a sketchbook the whole time, I had a little one in my pocket, pencils, and I'd sit in the Zodiac sketching as we went along and then bring it home and I worked a lot on screen prints, in fact, seemed to be quite a conducive method to getting the light and the colours right. And currently I have those pictures hanging in my house. 
Um, but I've never lost the urge to go back, but I think I should be a nuisance tripping over things on the ship nowadays. <laughs> um, this is my first trip in 2003 to Spitsbergen, as it's called. Nowadays it's called Svalbard, and I was totally captivated by the colouring, so I was using pastel a lot. The colours are amazing and I, I, I just couldn't resist it. So I'd be out in the Zodiac sitting on the side, getting a wet bottom if it was rough at all. But as you can see, it's mostly very calm. The mountains are very grey when they're not snow covered. As you can see, the broken up pack ice is not brilliant white at all. It's varying shades of grey and lavender and, and blue. Uh, on, a, on an afternoon when we were perhaps cru cruising uh, for the bird colonies, I would be sitting there doing a very quick, tiny sketch with a pencil because you've got a life jacket on, you've got all your clothes on, it's quite difficult. You fumble around under your life jacket to get your pencils out. Uh, so a pencil uh, or just a stick of pastel, a couple of sticks of pastel would be what I was using. So many of these won't show up very well because they're pale colours, as you can see. Um, this little message to myself says six sketches in Hornsund on Thursday in the morning and here's some of the mountains round about. You can see um, um, rather like Cape Town has a cloud over the top. It's cloth, that's Table Mountain. And so it goes on, there are masses and masses of them. This dark pastel I found very useful because it makes it quite dramatic. This says the ship's pushing through the ice towards the glacier, which is here in the middle. Um, I, I haven't worked on these. I picked on one or two, and then when I was screen printing for the finished pictures, uh, it's an amalgam, probably. It's a sensation I'm never going to reproduce exactly from any sketch because I'm not interested in doing that. I just want the feel of it. Let's see if we've got any pencil ones here. There's so many books full of it all. Oh, here's some walruses that are quite fun. Very smelly. They make noises at both ends and it is extremely loud and smelly when you get near them. We were near enough, ooh, 10 feet away. They were pulled out on a gravel strip. And then um, we were cruising along and uh, we came to enormous great bird citadel with the, the um, kittiwakes and the, all the other sorts of gulls flying about around it, making a noise, and it's all covered in guano. We were a very tiny little boat. I suppose this cliff was probably three or four hundred feet high, and the birds were nesting on all these ledges. It was August, which is the middle of the time when you can go to these cold places. Uh, my people I admire, artists I really admire, um, I'm not decrying renaissance and way back because I am very interested in the history of everything art-wise but currently I really admire Joan Eardley's work who was working in Scotland. Um, John Piper is another person I would turn to to look and see about methods. He was a polymath and another landscape artist is Gra uh, Graham Sutherland. All those people I admire a lot, and of course, many, many more. Uh, as to copying old masters, I have never done that, but I do consciously use ideas from other people's work. 
and currently I'm giving a little tutorial to a student and I'm taking her through different developments in art history and we got as far as Picasso so obviously I would be taking some elements of that into my own work but never copying and I don't use photographs either. The photographs tend to make a landscape flat. Uh, I've seen people on the program that you may have seen, both the portrait and the landscape, and a lot of them do use photographs, but I think it kills the spontaneity and the liveliness of the painting that you produce. You don't need to be outside to keep your training going with your pencil. You need a little sketchbook and just do one a day round your house, garden, draw some of your jugs, your flowers, anything that takes your fancy, but do one drawing every day and you'll be amazed how much better your skill is. Motivation is difficult when you get older because it's all more of an effort. But I go to a group on Monday and we bandy about ideas and it's very good, you can ask for criticism. And I recently took a, a collage that I was working on and I think they thought it was like play school. Uh, so people will be honest. Another motivating, motivating thing is going to galleries, keeping up with what's going on in the upper art world, um, meeting up with our arty friends, having criticisms together. Um, looking at my old sketchbooks and thinking, oh, that wasn't much good, <laughs> I must do better. And, and really just using what I can locally to get me up myself full of an uh, urgent desire to do it, paint it, draw it. This is painted just with a brush and a stick for the ink and even the ink dropper very quickly done from a tiny little sketch from a trip to Lanzarote 10 years ago now. And I did three or four of these back at my Monday group, one after the other, and I really enjoyed doing it. And as you can see, it's quite carefree, quite liberating, I think anyway. These splints I collected from the seashore locally and they're so tactile, you just want to handle them. That one's very heavy. These are very sharp. So that's a quality you want to get if you're drawing it. And I also picked up a lot of shells, which are worm-eaten and fascinating. These, these drawings I did with a, a pen and ink first and then pastels and charcoal. And you can recognize this one belongs there. That's a, 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 my drawing of that particular lump. And then I made myself do some exercises. This is the same, the same beach with some little bits of collage of the sea holly not very successful. Tried again with the shells and flints in the foreground. I was slightly more pleased with that. That's uh, an ink. I'm going to show you one that did not work and I'm going to cut it up and reuse this nice paper. It's quite good um, cartridge. So very dull indeed, so I'm going to cut it up and paint over the top of this. I reuse not only watercolour paper, which is thick enough, um, but I also reuse oil paintings and paint over the top. These exercise small pieces of work are, it's great fun to do. You put masking tape on your piece of paper to the size and shape of the areas that you want to paint on 
and that means that you don't have to fuss around with the edges. So when I painted it, I've finished painting, I've got plenty of splodges on the masking tape. And then you have great fun ripping it off and you've got, lo and behold, you've got nice edging. So that's one little trick for when you're doing exercises. This one I have failed with altogether. I'm not happy, so I'm going to cut it up. So then I'll have two bigger areas to paint on and probably some sort of boats and beach scene. So cut it up. Uh, I should get out a piece of cardboard and put it on here and use a scalpel with a metal ruler, but because I'm doing it quickly, I'm just cutting with scissors. So then I've got a piece that I'm not pleased with and I could use it upside down or that way and I'm just going to paint over the top of it. I call this painting on reclaimed paper because these three have all been painted on a failed exercise which included orange, which I've not put on this time. Uh, and you can see you've already got some sort of, it's fun. You adapt the drawing a little bit to use the white patches, but you've disguised the space in the middle. This is where it would have been, the white space. So three watercolors, that's uh, mostly gouache, some wax resist and some ink. And you can have great fun and it suggests the shapes very often more than starting on a piece. I'm frightened of white paper, so I like doing this. The top one is a derelict Scottish bothy. The middle one is uh, Jarman's, Derek Jarman's house at Dungeness. And the other one is the Isle of St Kilda, which now has nobody living there. It was evacuated in the 1930s. I would say to everybody who is practicing any form of artistic creativity, whether whatever it is, even if, it, if it's sewing, tapestry, collage, whatever, do try something new, pick up some ideas, try it. Try and expand your range. Don't just get in a rut, a comfort zone and keep on painting the same thing. I think it's very important to keep an open mind and if you don't like acrylics, say, go back to oils. And if you don't like either of those, work in charcoal or pastel. There's no end to the combination of media that you can use. I like printing with old bits of lino on top of magazine pages, which is a really unpredictable form of <laughs> creating a picture. And it's great fun to do. Keep up your, yeah. the urgency of your artwork. Keep the zest going. Talk to other people. Go to a, a group if you can. Go to galleries. Watch anything that they might be showing you on television. And go, of course, to films. There have been many recently. There was a brilliant one of the girl with the pearl earring. And I would say, just keep going. Mary Fedden painted till she was 94. And David Hockney is still going and he's in his late 80s. So there's, there's no reason to stop at all. And one more thing I'd say, if you've got a subject going, don't feel every time you've got to produce a perfect picture on some different subject. Use all the different media that you can and stick with it. It should last you a year like David Hockney. In France, he's been painting in Normandy the whole year, more or less the same things. Trees and uh, blossoms and his house. It's a great mistake to think that each time you're going to produce something brilliant because that doesn't happen. <laughs>